I don't know what happened, but you are now tuned in. VOs on effect. I'm gonna run this back too. Ooh, just gonna set the mood. You tuned in with Nala Deus. We're gonna make sure he's live. I don't know what's going on with this. You know what I mean? But it's all good. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? How's it going, man? Man, good, bro. Good, bro. Can't complain, bro. Right? Can't complain, bro. What That's you eating, good. bro? What you eating? You ain't gonna share nothing? Send me a digital sandwich, bro. Nah, it's just it's just <laughs> chips. I'm as with you. I'm as with you. What's up, my bro? What's up, man? It's been a minute. Yeah, I know, man. Man, you everything looking good though. Everything looking good, bro. God bless your daughter, man. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Likewise, same to you and your family, man. I know. Thank you, bro. I know you've been laying low for the past couple of years working on music, man. You know, Chileando, You know, you just, you know, I, I, if I'm not, if I'm not on the bow, I've always been an in-house make music person, man, and I kind, that kind of, I kind of suffered for that locally, but you know. Nah, don't worry about it. I need him actually locked in that department for a while because I was too much into the show stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I became, it, it was like I became a promoter after a while. You but you a I mean? vet, bro. You a vet, though, man. Tell them, bro. You already know. You already put work in, so. No, nah, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I kind of like, I was just caught up in it. I was doing it. Yeah. And I had so many people that were talented around me, you know what I'm saying, that I could reach out to. So it was just, it was just. Me, 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 me and you had the opposite problem. <laughs> We we got a trade problem. <laughs> with I, need, the music. I need right there. I need you know. Yeah. I need some of that equipment right there. It's a one. So hey, thank you, bro. I gotta make it look presentable. You feel me? Because uh, I don't really got too many like good looking spots in my crib like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, that's fine. That's dope. That's dope. You still you uh where you where you at right now? You in uh you in the city? You in Orlando? Or? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, man, I've been living in the same area, bro. I think like. Since I've been out here, I I really haven't really moved around. I think I lived in like near Carver Shores at one point. Uh, right. I think that's the furthest. But like I, I think I guess you would call this south southwest or something like that. Uh, like where between the Florida Mall and uh, Millennia. Right, right, right. I've been I've been here since man, bro. Since the beginning, I came since I came out in like ninety eight, ninety nine. Been like that for real. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's what's up, man. Uh, but was it um? I mean, since you were around, because I I moved out here in the early '90s too. So like, what was it like for you being on that on that end? Because yeah, you know, people don't you know like Orlando's pretty wide, so like not everybody's in yeah the mix too much unless they go somewhere where they all meet up. You know what yeah, I mean? so, every I mean like everybody's from one side too. Like everybody, it seemed like was from the east side uh, that I met. Like a lot of the artists. They were like, yo, I'm from East Orlando. Everybody was from East Side. So that my biggest right. problem was me. You know, people don't understand Orlando's huge, bro. Like 45 minutes to one side, 45 minutes to the other side. Like And that's then you gotta go up or south or wherever they at. Yeah, yeah. You gotta find the right road and then there's traffic. Yeah. It'll take you an hour it'll take you an hour to go not too far, you know. Man, it was crazy. I didn't so I you know, I was young when we came when my, my folks migrated from PA to, to here and um man I was sleeping on the scene because I didn't really know where it was at you know I've always been into hip-hop but man when I got introduced to the scene like 07 06 it mm -hmm. like just getting to see what where everybody was where all the rappers were at it was like crazy bro I remember they had the UCF things and it was it was yeah. crazy back then bro no no it was it was um 07 I was like the big b-boy jams back then, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
huge B Boy gym. And I remember, man, you had vets of Ken killing it. Matt Ills was out there doing the jet lounge battles. Um, I mean, it was huge. Like, it was a really good time in, in um, Orlando hip hop. Really good time in Orlando hip hop, in my opinion. You know what I mean? It was a really nice time, bro. Locally, for like the artists, it was really nice. You know what I mean? Word. Yeah, the Elements Hip Hop battles. Word up. Somebody just said that. That's right. It's, uh, shout out to Luminous. Yo. That's DJ Luminous. He's like, um, I want to say he's one of the founders, I think, like in that, the class wow. that it, you know, when it happened, I, I believe it was him and Conscious and a couple other people, I think. But from what I remember, that was like the earliest. Shout um, out Luminous, man. You know, era of, of, that I remember that was kind of throwing those events because every month, every, I think, March, they had like Hip Hop Month. Yeah. And, you know, they, they would have a B-Boy event or there'll be a rap battle at some point, you know, and either me crucial or Hills. Too. Yeah, that you know, was crucial that's... back then, bro. That was, we needed that, man. I think we still need it. I mean, I don't know how to, we can move about that, but I mean, especially in Orlando, I feel like, well, but we in a pandemic, I get all that. But man, aside from that, bro, that, that was the stuff that inspired me, bro. Seeing everybody rocking like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, so there was a, a group before them. Basically, it's like students. Yeah. So once they graduate and leave the school, whoever is in charge of that group at that point, you yeah. know, they take it. To, they take it to. So, you know, a lot of them were just outside of the box thinkers, and you know, then they because the hip hop month was literally, I think it was like three weeks out of out of March. Yeah. Like every week, and there was something to do for like Friday and Saturday, and maybe something on Sundays, and then there was like a big show at the end. Yeah, it's like they would act, and then there'd be like local battles or what. It was crazy. But so, I remember from week to week, there was always something to do. Like if you were an artist or a creative or whatever, it, it was always something. Like you, you didn't, you weren't bored, bro. Like, hey, yo, there's a show going on this Friday. Hey, tomorrow there's another show. Bro, that's crazy. crazy. I was talking, I was talking to uh, homeboy Mav about that the other day. Like, not too many people really tap into the the colleges like that, but. Yeah. That's what got me. He, yo, Luminous just said something dope too. He said pulling money from universities is always tough. Like that's a good point. That's a good point. Behind the no, step, the, behind the, the curtain, you know. You know, I don't know, but you got the scoop, so we got to talk about that later. Hey, that's you, you, nah, that's so. good stuff. That's good stuff though. Like real talk, I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't know nothing about that because I remember I was just uh, spectating. Bro, I remember I saw a Ghostface Killer concert at UCF for free. Wow. And somebody else, but it was like it was just in it was just there. He was just in the grass. Just, that's huge, bro. <laughs> it, was, it was like I was there waiting for like an hour. I was like, nah, this ain't gonna happen. And then he right. came and he came with his whole crew and his son and you know, his whole squad and, and it was just for free. I like, used time, man. Like I was yeah. I was I was wet too behind the ears coming out there and just seeing everybody killing it. I remember that's back when um well at least what I remember was like Ills used to have long spiky hair. He had the spiked up hair right at one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember it was a different time. Baggy clothes, you know what I'm saying? Different way different looks back then, yo. Wow. Yo, I, I don't know if I told you this, right? I always I always said I'd bring this up whenever we get on here. Um I told Crescendo about this. Wow. So obviously y'all was y'all was like really putting in work back then. Obviously your brother, shout out to Mike Ray McNasty, you know the right. whole crew. You know they're just killing it, Shinobi, all of them. And um, man, so I remember when I changed my name in like oh eight, because you know I used to go by something else back in the day, just sim, you know you remember. Right. And so I remember I didn't know you like that, but you knew we knew each other kind of thing. And so I remember we, we went up and. Somebody say, yo, his name is Naladez or something like that to you. And I told Chris, I never left me, bro, what you said to me. Like, that was like my, at the time, that was like my my uh, stamp of approval from the scene in a sense, you know. You uh -huh. said, uh, yo, with a name like Naladez, you better bring it, man. That's all you told me. I'll never forget that. And, yo, that was all you said. And then you dipped. For real? I kid you not. <laughs> it was like a scene in a movie, bro. It was like, you, you said it. And then you did, I guess you had to leave, but it was like, we was in a group. It could have been, uh, you know, Brown said, you know, Frankie, uh, right, right, right. I think Matt Ills was there because I didn't know Matt Ills like that back then. I think I met you, Frank, I met you through Frankie first. I think. Yeah. Through Blow Sundays, Tank Rays. And right, you, right, we right. was outside. We was right. right on that block. Like, 
And you you said that I never forget. It was right by um, where was the club? That club that was right there too, uh, like Taboo or something like that. One of them. Uh, it could have been near this. It was definitely Tanker Rays. Uh, I just it was like a way we were we were some way which way on the street, whichever street. And you just said that and dipped. It was like, so, <laughs> yo, you pulled a prince on me, bro. You pulled a <laughs> prince on me. You said with a name like Naladeus, you better be dope. And then he just did. I was like, "Yo!" And um, like was a Batman. Yeah, and then I think Frankie, Frankie looked at me and he tapped me because, bro, again, y'all are veterans. Y'all were putting in mad work at the time, so it was a big deal for us to like build with y'all. You feel me? Because we were just coming in. We went. We didn't have any clout, nothing. And so when you said that to me, I lo- and Frankie looked at me and tapped me on my shoulder. He's like, "That's good. That's good. You need like that's encouraging, bro." I was like, "Yo, for real." But then you made me feel nervous, <laughs> you know, like, the la- the next time yeah. I rap, you know what I'm saying? I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> you killed it, though, right? You know, it's funny. Another story, I'm not, I'm not going to go off on too many tangents, but another you story. You that night. You killed it that night, right? No, well, I didn't get to, I think we freestyled, you know, we just off the top. No, but... you killed it, though. You killed it, though. Yeah, yeah, all right. But, but the, <laughs> there was another time, though. I will say this, and I, I'm putting myself on blast. It's all good though, because it, oh, it's, it's this memories though. It's memories. You you was at a show at uh, uh Austin's. I don't know if you remember this, and it's like 2012, okay. right? See, it's a while back. It's okay. a while back. So I'm, I'm making you go in your digital catalog in your brain. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's when I that's when I started really going like yeah to like, like all, the Austin. That's when Austin's was taking over that open mic scene a lot. That was and, when uh, it started. Like everybody took it serious, and you can't. Yo, you showed. Like, hey, you showed. You showed up though. You was like, "Yo, you rocking tonight?" I heard you rocking tonight. I was like, "Yeah, yeah." So, all right, cool. I came to check you out. I was like, "All right," and I was a little nervous. And then, and then I, I was practicing in the back of Austin's, like with my earbuds, just listening. Uh, last minute practice, you know what I'm saying? And then I walk in, and bro, I slipped up in the middle of my set. I don't remember what it was. And when I got off you said something else that was very like needed. Like you gave me a little bit of a, what do you call it? Like a, a critique, but it was, I needed that. You said, right. yo, next, well, you're too dope to be making mistakes like that live. And I was like, dang, you know what I'm saying? And then you said, next time you be ready. Like, don't, you shouldn't be making those type of slip ups. I was like, all right, bet. So that I still, I took those two things with me, bro, that you gave me. So. No, I mean, I, I don't, I'll be honest, I, I vaguely remember because yeah, yeah. I try to give, de- you know, criti- criticism if I really, if I really, like, see that it's something that's um, got potential, you know what I mean? And um, then I'll be able to... He said words of wisdom. Um, <laughs> word, be, Crescendo yeah. said words of wisdom. Yeah, um, no, I... I <laughs> I try to like you know give that that thought out because yeah you know I I I never got that so like or I rarely got that maybe got that a couple times but I was like you know if I see it then I'll give my critique on it a little bit but not like on some jerk stuff you know what I'm saying like no I was very but, appreciated man seriously I respect I, was hoping, I respect like, man I hope you know I hope you're not out here going going to put me on on front street with being no, a no, jerk no 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 it was it was. It was you don't remember that show? Nah, you told nah. me try harder, you scrub. <laughs> nah, yo, real talk. You gave me like you always show love, but like that, you always show love, man. You always kept it a buck, though. That's what I like. Like if you said something, you didn't say it like mean. You know what I'm saying? You was just like, yo, you too dope. Like I came to support you. You too dope to be making them type of slip ups. And it was a little minor slip up, but you caught it. You feel me? Right, so it right. was enough for you to go, yo, you should. You need to work on that. And, bro, I, I never forgot. I never forgot that. I was like, yo, word up. You know, it's crazy. Um, Like, a year ago, or I, I don't remember what, 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 what Art Basel it was, but I rocked in Art Basel. And we did this dope show. It was like 30 acts, right? Real quick. And they had people from Miami, people from this, different cities, and then they had a set Yeah, that was an Orlando set. And it was a bunch of us, you know. Vets Kim was broken down and solo acts. Shinobi was there, chemist, biz, right? Anyways, so once I'm on stage, it's pretty packed. Yeah. And 
I'm just vibing with the people in the front because there was there was really into it. But those people in the back, I got off stage, and my um dude sees me, dude I know from way back, you know, from New York. I didn't even know he was there. He sees me, he's like, "Yo, man, you killed it!" But uh, you know, I just see like you just gave the energy right here, and he, but he just started giving me critiquing, you know, critiques because he's been he's been in it for like 30, 40 years. Yeah, he's like yeah, more eye contact to the back of the room and da 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 and I was like word you know and, but in, in my head I was like damn all right because sometimes be like hey man you killed it all right peace yeah and yeah, yeah. And, and you know at first I was like nah I do. and then I was like damn I didn't look at the back of the room at all like because like sometimes you're in that zone you don't care you don't think about it yeah same but like people are gonna mingle regardless unless you're you know Mega star where everybody's at the edge of their seats or, yeah. or you know into it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like it's cheating at that point because you got the crowd wrapping your lips. <laughs> if you had art basil where we got art surrounding us, you know, and there's been five, six acts before me, you're probably gonna wanna go go get a drink, go get a burger, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. So like but the point is the whole um giving criticism is kinda needed because Sometimes only people don't even care enough to do it, so that's why I just try to, you know. Hey, man. I don't get criticism from everybody. I Wise mean, man like, accepts critique, bro. It's it's wisdom, man. Yeah. Like I, we I needed it, bro, because like I said, there wasn't there was a few cats locally that like had been putting work that were trying to like help me in certain things. Like Ills was definitely one of those people who was like, yo, uh, he wouldn't really. He was always trying real cool. Ills never really gave me harsh criticism at all. He was just always like. Just always step your bar game, your pen game. You know, he was always just trying to tell me to do stuff like that. And he challenged me that way. Like, we would have writing sessions, and he would just sit there. You know, it was with the multi-schemes. He just always kind of just go in, and then I'll be sitting there writing, too. And I'll be like, all right, dang, okay, you wrote that pretty quick, man. <laughs> He's like, right. stuff Another like that. thing, too, he, he likes to – um, because me, me and Ills lived, lived together for a while, way back. And, dang, okay. Well, yeah, me and him and – Soliloquist, you know. Oh, well, wow, it was wow, a soliloquist, yeah. too, right? So, anyways, he likes to, you know, keep you sharp. So yeah. he'll be freestyling all day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know I heard. I, mean? I, I heard. heard um, that. Swam. Swam used to make y'all. I heard Swam would like kind of have y'all freestyle sometimes, like a record, like almost right, like y'all play around with a record and kind of freestyle, play around with it to like come up with concepts and stuff, right? Well, sessions with Swam is usually like one on one. Yeah. Only because everybody's so busy, you know what I mean? So, like, if Swam had time for a session with Ills, then, you know, that room is taken, so I'm going to just go to this studio over here and work with this guy. You know, I'm just work on whatever. That's crazy. But I know that they were working on, like, some freestyle stuff, and I've heard them just go off. You know what I'm saying? I've oh. heard Swam freestyle crazy. And what's bugged out about Swam is that, I don't hear him freestyle often, but he somehow he just remains super nice. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, for me, that's it. Took a while to kind of sustain it because I think it's like more like a muscle. So, but with Ills, yeah, you know what I mean? Like he's been always he's always been been with it. I only seen Ills not sharp for like a one year span, and that was like right after he came back from the military. Oh, that makes sense. So, yeah. But what I'm saying is like he's always he's always kind of rapping and. I, I see that a lot of battle rappers do that. Every time I hung out with Storm or, you know, uh, My Verse, Grain, you know, they're always kind of freestyling, like, low-key throughout the day. And that's it's like how a, It's like doing me. reps and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, just keeping themselves, like, strong, like flex, you know what I mean? That's that's dope. That's wild, man. Right. Dude. Well, so, I, was with, I was with Storm, Verse, and Wasted Talent, and they were freestyling all day. And it just forced me to just, like, think of battle raps in my head. And I'm not even preparing for no – like, they're just working on battles. So, yeah. like, they're just, you know, just freestyling. like Kind of like a funny cypher. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you say I a line. I remember used to do that. He used to make my – take your name and make, like, a whole verse out of your name. Like, just – he'd break up your name in syllables and just kind of go in. Bro, I would just sit there and go, man, I don't know if I could touch that, bro. I just, this stuff was crazy. Nah, bro. It usually gets to the point I was annoyed because I used to be out in the, sh in the show so much, I would see him every other day. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yo, amethyst, yo, and my aunt, or he would be like, yo, migraine, because my, you know, grain wasn't there. He'll just like, yeah, think of, you know, think of something to rhyme with, just to start a cipher, you know. And that's Always what's dope about, that. you know, just yeah, and it keeps you sharp because once the crowd comes around, yeah, then he's gonna start freestyling for real, you know. But he ain't gonna start a cipher with you unless he knows you nice. That's what. That, that's my. That point. is you know, true. So that he was big on on me with that man. I never really like. I I valued freestyle when I met the came in the scene because I saw that it that y'all use it as arsenal. You know what I mean? So, uh, he was one of the cats that when I started to notice that when I would be there, he called me with him to do it. I'd be like, all right, maybe I'm getting better at it because I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't. But nah, bro, yeah, that dude you, 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 right. The freestyle thing, making beats. Right, and it's all the same. It's all the same muscle, you know. Right, right. And uh, it's just you know, however you want the outlet to be, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. So like, you, just, you might not freestyle as much as, or I know, I, 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 oh, oh, no, nah. we freestyled. We fell. Uh, we fell. We're like, ah, no. <laughs> I fell off. I fell off with the freestyle. So um, but your beats are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, I haven't made beats in a minute, but it'll take me. Maybe five, four or five beats for, for me to get back in the groove or something. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, in your case, you got different angles. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I like that you make your own beats. And, you know, it just, you get to create the whole, uh, the whole world, the whole realm of whatever the record is, the album, you yeah. know, whatever. You know? And then you can create that for other people, you know? Yeah. What I was going to ask you about, so, like, is that how you got into the scene more so? Like, through those people you mentioned, like, through lounge battles and, and UCF events and stuff like that? It's crazy. Like, you know, I you know, I was I was definitely heavily, like, just kind of rapping at my, my local church, youth 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 events and stuff like that. And then uh, Frankie, Frankie was actually, I got to give credit to Brown Study, man. He was instrumental in cats like me coming out. He was like, yo, come out come out to it when he had to blow something. Well, I mean, I was going to events. Uh, shout out to uh, who was once my ma music manager at the time, but he was also like a mentor to me. His name was, uh, we used to call him Chairman Mel. Still do, but my boy Mel, uh, my man Mel Martinez, he used to take us out to just UCF. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because at the time I was a church kid, like just in the church all the time. Like I didn't see hip hop outside of the church. So he, he kind of came and said, yo, you know, check out what's, what, what's hip hop like. He actually educated me on hip-hop, period, right? So he brought me out of that and got me kind of, like, open to look at what's going on in the scene. And, bro, like, because he used to run the porch back in the day. He used to do the hip-hop thing at the porch and, um, and, and, uh, in Orlando. And then that's uh, Frankie was like, yo, I, when he was with I Am The Host, I don't know if you go back. You remember those days, like, when he had the band. And right, right, Frankie was something. like, yeah, and Frankie was like, yo, Come check. I did a show with Frankie one time. It was like a community event. And Frankie was like, yo, come to this spot. It's called Blow Sundays. It's in Tanqueray's. It's a little niche spot. It's off the corner. Da, da, da. And I was like, all right, bet. I came. He was like, right, can you freestyle? I was like, yeah, a little bit. And he was like, all right, bet. Well, this is where you can sharpen it. And we came. We went down the steps, bro. And it was, I had such a blast, man. It was, it was wild. Like, we, were, we, was, we would just start freestyling with the band. And then Frankie already knew, uh, was it um, Alex Miner, who used to go by God and Miss Ryan back in the day. <laughs> yeah. he, he used to rock with, you know, remember the, the caveman theory, all of that. Cap hey, Callis. God. Yeah, Cap, Cap Callis, you feel me, all of them. And so way back then, and so I, I remember Frankie was like kind of like bridging the gap for the, for the cats that was coming, kind of like out the church and we was coming over there to rock with y'all. And right. he he introduced me to Ills. I remember meeting them, then meeting you, then your brother. And I kind of met your brother in passing, like. Um, but he always showed love, and so it was like a thing. And but I that was it. Like, I was developing. I guess like uh, I think I think um, Alex would would show me love on production back then. He he would tell me like, "Yo, try doing this, try doing that." Oh, Swam too. I don't. I I had a shout out Swam because Swam ran into me in '08. We started politicking a little bit, and Swam would tell me, like, yo, I like what you're doing. I like your sound. And um, he, I remember one time he picked me up from my crib, 
took me to to the art spot. Remember, he had the art spot, and um, yeah, uh, Culture Mart. Yes, and then he designed. He actually designed one of my covers for a project. I never got to get the cover design though, just because it was me. I dropped the ball because I didn't have a whip. So he was the only only way. I, you know what I mean? I was a teenager, so I was like, right, man, right. I can't pick it up. He's like, I still got this artwork for you, fam. You know. <laughs> and uh, you know, so I was like, I got this artwork for you sleeping right now. And um I, I remember, <laughs> yo, real talk. Yo, Swan, yo, shout out to Swan because he, he used to keep you on your toes. And so he's like, if you really yeah. want this, if you really want this, you're gonna show up to my crib. You know, that's what he told me. <laughs> so <laughs> yo, real no, talk. If he gets to that point, that conversation will turn into that. If yeah, he and he get, he bought me a CD. I I gotta look, I still own the CD of an artist, a rap group. It was called uh, something MCs, uh, shoot, uh, so, something MCs is like a, a rap group from the nineties. I'm mad. I'm gonna have to look it up, but he gave me this, he bought me a CD from a CD store and said, you remind me of this group, study this group. And yo, for real, like he, he, he low key was like, just trying to mentor me a little bit, help me out. Yes. And so shout out to Swan. He was one of the other people that. I don't think I've ever been able to really say much, like give much credit to, but he's definitely. Every time I see Swam, he just be like, "Man, you could be doing way more out here, man. You could be doing way more out here." I was like, "I know, I know." He always kind of reprimands right. me, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to Swam for real, man. He's one of the key ingredients too. I'll be, I'll be telling people he ha he has a different point of view, a different perspective. Yeah, because he's been doing it. You know, he's been doing it for longer since you know you and I were kids. You know yeah, what I'm saying? so. I always take um, advice from him and, and, you know, and try to relate or try to adapt it to today's time. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So, yeah. So in, in the in the music scene of things, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you could be doing more. We could all be doing more. You right. know what I'm saying? But now that the way the world is, we can't do that shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in, in terms of like, but it forces you, to shine because you in the studio all the time anyway. You know yeah, yeah, so yeah. It kind of, and then, you know, you, you got to create content for whatever your next, you know, video is, or whatever you're going to promote, your album, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, but you mix that with all the secrets and the tricks that Swam has, you know, acquired since what, 94, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. in conjunction to your knowledge and things that you learn along the way plus your homies and you know what i'm saying i know you rocking with docs in now and the advice you're gonna get like everything you're gonna have your own little gumbo and then yeah. you'll be able to no matter what room you're in you know how to adapt to it because that's all it is at the end of the day like yeah. you're gonna get in these rooms and you're gonna either you're gonna get in these rooms and you're gonna adapt to what's happening or people, you you know, you draw them into you. And that's kind of like what I feel like COVID is making everybody have to do. Like, Yo, you know, you know what's funny is that somebody told me, yo, man, it's whack, right? We can't do show. Like, I, you know, I know a few people who make money off shows. You make money off shows, like people just traveling. Right. And it slowed, it made everybody get to the same level, eye level. Like, we all on the same level, right? Like, national artists, everybody's like this now. Even Even playing field. And somebody was like, yo, I can't, I can't take it, bro. I got to be out there. That's, I said, bro. And then they asked me, how you taking it? I said, well, man, welcome to my world. Now you got to make music. <laughs> like, I said, now you got to create, bro. What's good? Like, I've been making music um, in, in my own space forever. And right. uh, my problem was I had content. I just wasn't going out. And so right. now it's flipped. You can't go out. So what you going, you know, now I'm, I'm it's, it's kind of like I'm in my comfort zone. I've been, you know, just in my comfort zone staying like this. It's kind of like my natural habitat. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to, right. you know, my wife and my family are cool with me, you know, taking my time in the studio. And, you know, so my wife met me, bro. I was, I, bro, I used to spend, my parents would tell you, bro, shout out to my mom and dad. They used to encourage that. Like, I, I locked myself in the room for eight hours a day, bro. And I wouldn't come out until I made like beats and everything man like and now where it took me hours i could sit down and make a beat in 10 minutes 15 minutes five minutes just you know and um Bro, my wife knows when you I, know? I don't want to cut you off but like no, no, no. just you made you made me think of something when i used to make beats i started when i was like 16 or 17 and 
I didn't really rap too much. I rapped a little bit, but my brother Grain always rapped, so yeah. I was just trying to make dope beats, and maybe he'll like them. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. My homies made beats for him, and I was like, I knew my, you know, my writing wasn't where I wanted to be. So, anyways, started getting good at that, and I was like, I saw, I heard Ninth Wonder would make like seven or nine beats a day. Yeah. And I was like, Heard and I was like, "Where I'm gonna try to do that?" And I I used to make probably like four to five a day, like every day, after yeah. high school, and then for like you know I think it was my my senior year or something like that, every day. And like when I got to like beat you know ninety or something like that, everything after ninety was crazy, you know. Yeah. And what up, Soy? What up, Ray? Yeah. yeah. What up? Oh, Ray's here. I, man, I know yeah. Ray forever, bro. He said Yo, he started eighth grade is when time. AM started flowing. No, is it eighth? <laughs> Ray Ray is the first guy that made me. Um, I don't want to say maybe, but like, cause my brother did when I was a kid. But like, when I started rapping again as a teenager, he was the he was there. Me and him, me and him in a clarity. We was in eighth grade. Wow, what up, Ray. That's crazy. Soy, what up? What up? What up, Soy? Man, so that's, wild. that's my that's one of the people I met back in O as well, back in O six, O seven. Always show love. So, the Pinoy with the flavor, son. That man had yeah. all the flavors, yo. He yo, I'm Soy so, made me bro. step my drum game up. I remember when I met Soy, I was like, Ooh. I remember I, I, I remember we sat down and um I just was using stock drums, man, and Soy was like, fam, you gotta step your drum game up. I remember he told me. And I was like, my, yo, like I was showing my beats and, and I'd be like, yo, I was, I was surprised nobody was, he was cringing, you know what I'm saying? But he saw the right. potential too, but he was like, yo, man, let me, let me, let me, let me exchange with some drums with you, man. Let me show you. And that, that changed everything, man. His, he's uh, undoubtedly, in my opinion, one of the best like sample choppers, period, man. Nah, yeah, yeah bro. So, bro. So he's yeah. nice, man. Straight um, up. You know, since we talking about production and everything, like, as far as you, like, like when you're making music, like, what do you think, um, like, what's the musical, like, what, how do you think nowadays makes his mark? Because I, I feel like you stand out, especially in the, the genre, whatever you want to refer to it as, like, you know, you're real sharp with lyricism, you know what I'm saying? So, like, how do you feel your whole music as a whole will stand out in 2020? Man, um, I just make music from the heart, man. Like, I, I know that sounds kind of cliche, but... Like, I, I, we came up in a time where, for me, like, hip-hop, to me, represented what made you feel good. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it doesn't, you know, for some artists, trap makes them feel good. You know what I'm saying? Some artists, it's EDM, you know? So I don't, I don't, I used to kind of solo that out as boom bap. And now I'm like, nah, man, like, it could be soul music. It could be whatever it is that makes you feel right. And uh, for me, like, when I write, I try to write from, like, actual stuff, like, life experience, memories, conversations. I never made up a story. And if I make up a story, it's probably like an allegory or something like uh, uh, an example. You know, it's never like, you'll never hear me talking about like, and no knock to people who do that. Cause you know, in the battle rap scene, that's that they, they do the gun bars cause it's, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I, I wasn't moving weight. I wasn't popping, popping off nothing. I wasn't doing, I never did that. Even when I wasn't like spiritual, you know, with my music or, or talking about God and stuff, I was never talking about something I never did. Like, I never did that. Um, and I knew people who was doing stuff like that. I just never was like, yeah, you know, I held I held this Glock, you know, da 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 da, da. Matter of fact, I never held a Glock until I legally could own one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. so, like, <laughs> so, you know, so I was never, like, gun bars. Like, my favorite MCs, even though they did do the gun bars, was, like, the Nas, you know, Nas's, the, the Rakim's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Slick Rick with the storytelling. Um, I love that, like, even though people like, yo, I could tell you, like, Common, I was like, I actually didn't get hit to Common until later, but I was really into, right. like, Nas. I, bro, I used to study Nas, like, I I got put on the Nas from It Was Written, and then I went back to Illmatic, and then I went everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, bro, like, hardcore. But he was, he heavily rubbed off, like, as an artist, and, and uh, like, lyricism. He made me want to write. Like, my brother, it, me and you got this in common. My brother was a rapper first, right? And right. so when I was a kid, my brother aspired to be an MC, and he used to write, 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 and he was dope. And my cousins too. My cousin, shout out to my cousin C's from Harrisburg, PA. 
my cousin um yeah. Josh. They used to all write. Hey. And, yo, I used to idol. I used to idolize them, man. And um, and um, yo. So I remember anyway. Like I would try to. I didn't know how to write, right? So like, you remember when the score came out? Fuji's the score came out on cassette. You yeah, know, yeah. I had. You know, I, I know I'm gonna date myself right now, but you had the A side and the B side. And sometimes on the B side, they give you the instrumentals to the tracks. So right. like, I I had the score, the Fuji score, and we would put the, and it was me, my sister, and my brother, and we was trying to form our own Fuji group. And uh, uh, yeah, I kid you not, my brother was like, no, we would write to the Fuji's, uh, the Fuji records, and then my brother was like, yo, you can't write. So he gave me a Casio, and he goes, try making beats. You can't write. He never. <laughs> My brother, I wish my brother was in here. He was like, yo, you you can't write, bro. Just make beats. Stick to making beats. And I was like, all right, bro. And I had the Casio, and I'm trying to, you know, do, 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 you know what I'm saying? Trying to do stuff like that. And right. my brother don't realize, like, that was, like, mad ahead of his time for him to tell. I was, like, eight years old. My brother gave me that. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, make beats. And I was like, I can't make beats. You know what I'm saying? It was bad fun. He kicked me out the group. He was like, nah, get out the group. Make some beats. <laughs> <laughs> yo, but yo, shout out to my brother because my brother Tony, cause my older brother, cause he was the first one that told me that I had bars. Like, I would, I would call my brother up. I know you since migraine. He was like doing it first, right? So whenever you started writing, I'm sure you was like, yo, bro, I think I got it, right? So I would call my brother up, and I had my notebook, my composition book, and I would just write rhymes, and I'd be like, yo, bro, I think this is it. I got the, I got the bars, bro. And my brother would be like. <laughs> My brother was annoyed with me, right? He'd be like, all right, go ahead. Right. And now, nah, but look, my brother go, it be, it's just like one in the morning, right? My brother's like, bruh, <laughs> just rap, right? And I'd be like, yo, check it. And I'd start rapping. And my brother be like, nah, nah, go back and work on that, bro. Work on that. Nah, you don't got it, right? <laughs> hey, work on that. And so one day when I was like 15, I called him up and I wrote a verse. And that was when he told me, he was like, hold up. Called his boy on the phone, yo, bro, spit that. And then I was spitting for people in the um, in his apartment complex on the sta on the stoop. And bro, that changed everything for me. If it wasn't for my brother telling me I was dope, and then rapping for a bunch of grown bro, look, I was I was fifteen rapping to thirty, uh, you know, twenty something year old dudes, thirty year old dudes, and they was like slanging. You know what I'm saying? Them dudes were sitting yeah. on the stoop like, yo, rap those lyrics. And I would just hold my notebook and rap it to them. I didn't know how to rap on beat yet, but I was rapping like as if I was. And, right. yo, shout out to my brother for like, he saw it. When it was 15, he was like, you got it. You got it right now. You got it. Where was yeah. this at? Yo, real talk, it was on OVT on Waterways. <laughs> Ooh, OVT, wow. fam, uh, at Waterways. Mm -hmm. We was in the stoop. My brother was, you know, I ain't trying to out my brother, but he was, you know, he was selling and whatnot. Mm. And uh, no, selling no, the, you no, know, that's, selling. that's even that's even iller because, you know, they they don't that that type of vibe. You don't just tune into anything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like, when they hit, me, yo, 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 fifteen years old and grown men just, that that's like for real listening to this stuff. Going, man, he got the he got the he got it, yo, he got it. Yeah, I was like, word mm. up. Word up, you know. That's crazy. I forgot about when you make a phone call and then you three way somebody and then they three way somebody <laughs> and they three way somebody and then everybody's yeah, all right, you go. Yo, yeah, that's then, when I knew my brother was like, Hold that thought. Let me call my man's up. And then he called my, my his his closest friend and was like, Yo, listen to my brother rap and he was like, Yo, your brother's still calling you buggy? Nah, li just listen to him, man, and, and that was it, man. Shout out to Awan. That was my dude at Juan, man. He he was another dude that was like, you got it. You got the juice now, fam. <laughs> That's dope, bro. So you, where's bro. Uh, your brother still rap? Well, you know, it's funny. My brother, man, and shout out to my bro, man. Uh, oh, that, man, God bless your daughter, bro. You know, I'm a daddy, so I'm, 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 I'm all for that. Uh, but, yeah, so... Um, what ended up happening with my brother was he, he was making moves on the scene, but he, my brother, my brother wanted to just be successful at it. You know what I'm saying? What's up? Yeah. My bad, yo. That's my dad. Of you, I got said. So, uh, he, um, <laughs> she's so beautiful, bro. God bless her, man. Thank but, you, man. uh, yo, so, 
So uh, my brother was, you know, he was getting play on like Hot 95, you know what I'm saying? Or Hot 95, I'm talking about uh, thinking something else. Uh, not, mm -hmm. Power 95, you know what I'm saying? And uh, or, or I think it was 102 at the time as well. He was getting right. love on the station. And he was doing more commercial music, you know what I mean? And my brother was very, what I respect about my brother, bro, was that he wasn't like, really trying to, like, he never fronted like he was, like, trying to be an MC no more. When he stopped being an MC, he was like, yo, I'm just trying to get paper off this, right? My brother was right. very honest. Like, I respected him because he was like, yo, I know you love hip-hop. And he introduced me to hip-hop. That's what bugged me out. I was like, son, my brother used to force me to listen to Wu-Tang when I was, like, six, seven years old, bro. And right. I'll be like, I used to, he used to, yo, me and my brother, you know, you know, bigger brothers used to, pit, like, punk you, right? So my brother right. would like push my head to the to the boombox and was like, "Who's this?" And I'm like, "Oh no, oh no!" And he'd be like, "That's Method Man. That's the Met. That's the cow. That's the cow." You know what I'm saying? So I kind of yeah. just, <laughs> yo, I real talk. I used to despise Wu Tang, man. That's Method I Man. Like, picture like a teenager putting another kid. And my brother's, brother's light skin, fam. He's a foul <laughs> light skin man, bro. He used to sit there and rub my face into the. Yeah, this is Wu Tang, fam. It's cow. <laughs> yo, hey, yo, check it out. You know how I used to get my brother back for shoving my face into the speaker? I used to tell him, it's Snake Man. You know why? Because, you know, Method Man had that lisp. He'd be like, yo, it's Method Man. Just, you know what I'm saying? So I used to be like, it's Snake Man. And my brother used to be like, no, it's Method Man. But, uh, yo, shout out to my bro. He didn't abuse me, not like that. It was just like, it was just like, he had it's such like a, a cartoon. love. Cartoon. Yo, real talk. My brother, we used to watch uh, Rap City, The Basement, and we used to watch, um, yo, remember when um, Wuha came out from Busta Rhymes? Wuha, yeah, got yeah. you all in check. Yo, my brother used to mm -hmm. record the, vi the, the, the video. Look, I'm dating myself. He used to record the video with a cassette boombox. He used to record the songs onto the tape live on the TV from the TV because we couldn't afford to get tapes. Wow. So we used to have to wait till like the, the, the top 10 list came on. And my brother was like, when Wuha comes on, you going to press record. I'm going to beat you up. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> you know? And yo, and nobody could talk. Nobody could talk because then you're going to pick it up, right? So my brother be like, yo, everybody shut up. And they're like, shh. And I'd be like, and he'd be like, yo, Wuha's on. And we would watch the whole video. And if anybody said anything on the video, my brother was like, now we got to re-record the whole record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, but I remember I had a hiccup. I was like, like that. And my brother was like, I got to re-record, you know? It was a tape. And, yo, it, it was I never, uh, he, does, he does it every four bar, every two bar. <laughs> I got y'all all in. Yo, you know, it's funny, right? My brother... My brother had a tape of one of the most influential albums for me, which was like, you know, Illmatic and stuff. And I never understood Nas when I was a kid. I was like into the Busta Rhymes and stuff. It was mad funny how my taste changed out like later on. Right. But yo, you know, that's back when it was popping, you know, woo ha, you know, let me see, put your hands with my eyes can see, you know, all that. Right. So that was like the era that impacted me the most because my brother used to force us to watch, like, we used to watch Rap City and, you know what I'm saying? My dad, my brother be like, yo, if you stay up late at night, that's when you get to see the real videos. You know, my brother was a trip, man. So, <laughs> shout out. I'm, I'm out of my brother right now. That's just like, I no, try to get him out. Like, I'm, <laughs> yo, like, when I started, when I was writing, yeah. I started writing because Grain was calling in 95 Live, which was the pirate radio station out here. Nice. And they would let you call up, and it was uncut. You could rap. You just couldn't say the F word. Right. But if you can say everything else, but if you say the F word, they bang on <laughs> and, and, and you would hear them bang, like you would hear bang, and that means they slammed the phone on you. And sometimes, it, you know, so what happened was every Saturday they would have an event, you would call in, and, you know, it was for like an hour, and that's why I first heard Zars, where I first heard Rugged. Wow. Um, all, you know, uh... I knew Madness through Battles and stuff. That's where I first heard, like, White Mike, Sonny Chulo, South Star. Wow. Going by a different name back then. A bunch of people. So, like, you know, when I heard Grain on it, and then at the end, the DJ and the host would vote on who won, or they would say who the best was. Not that it was, like, a battle, but just who was the best that day. Who had the best and bars. Grain, 
grain kept winning. Like yeah, week after week nasty, after week. Bro. Yo, shout out to, uh, to shout out to you, bro, for real, because yo, I was looking at his battles the other day, no lie. I literally went on YouTube because you know how your your brother would share like snippets of his his battles. Yeah. Bro, I saw a snippet of his battle and I was like so like my brain exploded because like your brother was throwing stuff like this, bro. Like, and honestly, bro, like your brother's one of the illest lyricists. Period. Like, I don't think he gets enough credit. I, uh -uh. bro, I'm oh I'm over here now. Exactly, yo, your brother is a man. Let me tell you. And I told him, you know, I, 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 when he messaged me one time, bro, I, I'm mad, yeah. I, mad love, bro. My grain, yo, he says some stuff, bro, and it makes you rewind it because sometimes you'll miss it. You're like, yo, what did he just? Oh, snap, re rewind. And he's so like right. confident when he's battling, like, yo, dudes could be coming at him, and your brother just be sitting there like this, right. letting them rap. And then, yo, your brother's so dope. I remember he kept making dude break. Like, you know how they serious and they battling? Your brother would say <laughs> stuff that make the other dude break. He'd just be like, ah, that's dope. That was dope, bro. That was dope. You know, like, they would break. And your brother would make dudes. And your brother would be like, I know. I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, shout out right. to your brother, Mike, man. One of the nastiest freaking MCs, period, yeah. bro. The thing about that is I've seen him, you know, me and some of the homies, like the whole B Ministry vets, we all seen him do it since... I mean, since I was a kid, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like, so to us, you know, you can see in the backgrounds of the video of the battles, like we be catching stuff early, or we just start laughing, like we understand what he's saying or whatever. But you know, he used to do that on the freestyle tip, off the head, and yeah. it would be him. He's crazy. Against, it would be him against a young Ills or a young Storm against Madness and Critical back back in the day. It was just. You know, back then, and Czar and, and Rugged, it was like war, for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to say war, for real. But, you know, it was They just, went in it. They went in, yeah. Bro, your was brother no was... was bro, Listen, remember, back then... Yeah. Back then, people don't understand. There was no rap shows. There was no local... Like, the scene yeah. was battles. Swan was doing his thing because he had, you know, had his, had his deal going and everything like that. Like, if you had a deal, then yeah. But other than that, it was battles. Yeah. So, you know, and then from there, then people started making music, which I like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it goes into what we're talking about now, but, you know, it's like glory days, you know what I'm saying? But Grain always, always been super, super sharp. Bro, one of my like, favorite lines from him, I'm not even going to try to quote it, but when he, he put that wordplay where he was like, too stupid, and then he was talking about the, you Jewish, bro, that, bro, bro. I remember I He's watched like, that and I spit my drink out. I was drinking juice and I like, spit it out. You think you gonna beat me, Jewish? Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He like, he like, he hit the. He was building up like the Nazi line, and then he was, bro. Oh, yeah. But the the dope part about what the way your brother spit, and I gotta give a little bit of shot. I gotta give Shani a bro because your brother's nasty, man. He um, uh, uh, he he built it up, but you couldn't see where he was going, bro. You couldn't right, see, right. you didn't know where he was gonna go, and then he hit you with the punch. And bro, your brother, your brother was so ahead of his time that he hit you with the punch, and dudes would be like, like nobody right. would respond because it was like, yo, wait, 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 run that back. <laughs> what did he just say? Because like that's how you know you ahead of your time when cats don't catch it. They just be like, oh snap. Like that's replay right. value. Like I have to rewatch your, every battle your brother be doing, and I be I went on. You, I remember I went as far back as the Wake Up Show when he was on the Wake Up Show when he had the right. corn rolls. I was like, Yo, your brother, your brother's from another planet, fam. <laughs> no, that's why he told stars. He really he be feel you know he he always felt uh, I don't want to say alienated, but he's always felt that sense of being. Um, I don't want to say the wrong word, but like, you know what I'm saying? Being a different being, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's always just the way he's grown up and, and the way he's adapted to stop. Like I've seen how he left the crib and became a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember that. So like, yo, when, get, you know, getting the love from, getting love from your brother was a big moment for me, bro. And he, and he did it like on, on a, on a message and, and bro, like that, I was like, yo, you like my stuff too? <laughs> 
Oh, it's slut. Like, because I'm like, I'm not. Like yo, I, 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 yo, I, I geeked out because. Oh, my God. Yo, you, you know, y'all vets, man. So your brother, when your brother gave me a shout out through, and it was through message, bro. To me, that was like, yeah, I'll take that. Like, and I, and I didn't even know I was on his radar because he's so dope. It's like, bro, I ain't even on your tip with the bars. And when he gave me a little, like, yo, he sent me love. He was like, yo, this is dope. I was like, really? You think it's dope? Okay. I did something right. I don't know what I said right in there, but. <laughs> I don't know what was dope to you about it, but okay, I'll take it. I'll take no, it. Man, you know, I appreciate that too, man. You know, because a lot of people, like, not to go on a tangent, but a lot of nah, people don't nah. really, you know, a lot of people kind of overlook that. You know, like Etern said, like a, a lot of people kind of sleep on him, but that's because, you know. One of the best lyricists you know? slash MCs, battlers in the Ozone period, history, period. You're like, like, for real, like speaking of all that, I know you didn't get down in battles and, and things like that. You're more like in the studio and stuff. I'm a pacifist. Not playing. Not playing. Not just, not playing. <laughs> I want. I want to. T I want to talk about what you've been doing lately, man. I know you got. Uh, you worked out a deal of some sort, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you building with what's the group? The crew. Uh, so it's, it's, it's called MC, uh, I know it's uh, all backwards, but M Menace Movement. Uh, Dayton. Um, so Dayton. Um, you know he goes back. Even to the battle world, you know what I'm saying? He was like right. Freestyle Fridays and all that. And My bad, um, Dayton. I pronounced it wrong. No, he's good, yeah, he's I remember good. seeing him on 106. Yeah, he used to he used to battle hard body. He just posted up a video where he was um he was he was ciphering with um Sean P. It was crazy. I didn't even know that. Yo, I used to watch him yeah. because I liked his voice and I didn't know he was a Christian rapper, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But he like still bring them bars <laughs> too, man. He's still dropping. Bro, he went on uh, I don't know if it was Sway. But I, I King was Tech, watching King it. Tech, uh, not King Tech. It was the um, it was on the same. Yeah, it was on um on, on Sway. It was say four or five though. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was like some other guys, but whatever it was, there was other rappers. And when he rapped, everybody was like, Yeah, scared. and like, you and know, was, for Christian artists, that's not you know that's tough because we I, I I get it. Sometimes we could come off a little gimmicky, like we trying to sell you something. And yeah, but he got he got Excalibur, like bro. It's that's, for, he, that's the I'll best you, way to describe. It, you so know you know saying? you know like, you know Stefanato, and and so Steph, you know he been putting in work, Steph. and he's a, he's a vet too. You know Steph, Steph got picked up by him, but he always wanted to work with me and Steph. Like he always had his eye on us, and he signed to an, a, a a label too. And when he started the label, he was like, man. Um, we met in 2013 when I had when I had my Peter Griffin body. You remember my Peter Griffin body? <laughs> so, I look, I, so I look like Peter Griffin with a beard, right? And so, wait up! I'll, I'll smoke. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll roast myself because it was true, man. I had I was oh, that. Crap, uh, uh, so I, I was like, yo, I was dad bodied out, and then I dressed like a dad, bro. I had the minivan dad outfit, right? I had the button up. I had the sandals. I had the sandals with the. Uh, with the socks on, feel me? And um, I was wearing the extra four four X shirts, you know what I'm saying? So and the and the Kangos, cause I I was that was just default hip hop, right? right and right, so right. so I remember I got introduced to dating at my church, and my pastor, who's uh, shout out to my pastor, man, he he loves hip hop. He's from the Bronx, you know what I'm saying? So he saw it come up, and he was like, "Yo, Dayton." I need you to meet my man. He never said my name right because he, he would butcher my name. So in New York, everything was MC this, MC that. So he was like, yo, this MC Eddie. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. So he go, he does that to me, right? And Dayton, Dayton is like, he's the homie. Like, it's, like, it's like a big bro. But I remember Dayton was sitting there just like this. Word. You know, Dayton's mad jersey, bro. He's like, word. I'm like, yeah. And then he does... My, my manager at the time was like, producer, rapper extraordinaire. When he said that, I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm getting set up. So, uh, and so Dayton, so Dayton just goes, word. Yeah, yeah, word. And so I'm like, he didn't, yo, we didn't say nothing to each other, right? And imagine, to, I, I, get the, I used to get this a lot. You don't look like you rap. You just look like a dad or something. I'm like, all right, bet. So he leaves, right? He leaves. And I'm showing my manager my new album that I'm working on at the time that actually uh, Maddox ended up get, uh, taking the picture for it, I believe. Or no, Maddox designed the um, font and stuff, and then Andrew Ramos, shout out to Andrew Frey, he took the picture. Andrew. He took the picture for it. And then so we go to the... Anyway, we, I dropped this album, 
and we go to um, what was it? Um, I'm, I'm working on a rough draft. My bad. I'm working on a rough draft, and I'm in the car. I got this '94 Honda Accord. It's mad beat. I used to call it the Scab Mobile because it looked like a scab, right? And it was mad beat up, fam. The only thing nice about my car was the car system because I do music, right? Like, so I had a nice, uh-huh. I had an Alpine. You feel me? So the Alpine rocket. So I'm showing my manager my music, and I was real modest. Like, I didn't like to tell a lot of people I did music. So I had the windows up. I wasn't blasting it, right? I was just showing them music. Yo, Dayton comes around the front of my car, knocks on the window. He's like, "Yo, let me, let me, let me hear what you're listening to." I let him in the back seat. You gotta, you gotta do it in his voice. Oh, he, he was like, "Yo, yo, let me listen to what y'all listen to right now, yo." So he gets he in. Was like, he was like, he, "Yeah, he get, yeah." No, I can't because he, he, he gets in. He gets in right, and he goes, <laughs> he go, "Yo, Mad Jersey, I love, I love Dave, Mad Jersey." He just goes in and turns up my stereo a little bit. Let me listen to this, and he listens to it. And he goes, um, he goes, yo, who's this? And I'm like, yo, that's me. And he goes, nah, 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 that's not you. That's not you. And I was like, nah, for real, that's me. And then my manager was like, yo, that's my man. And he goes, nah, that's you. Nah, you don't look like that's you. And I was like, no, it's me. It's me. And he just goes, what? Dang. And then he goes, why have I never heard of you? And I was like. Man, I don't know. And then he just goes, I right, bet. And then he, that's when we exchanged numbers. And from 2013, he's always been trying to, like, just help me out, work with me. So he's always that's been dope. helping me out, man. Yeah. That's dope. I, I've always, like, seen his name because I never, like, I remember not knowing how to pronounce it, so I always would see it. Yeah. And I didn't really watch what it was, you know what I mean, until, like, a year ago. And then uh, I guess – I, I don't know if he has ties out in Orlando, whatever the case, but like, yeah, I started seeing his name more often. And I was like, let me check it out. And then I had heard he used to battle or something like that. So, and once I heard his voice, I was like, oh, he probably yeah. chopped people up. You know what I'm saying? My but bad. Like, My kids was in the back. <laughs> I was like, I was like, get over there. Get over there. Get over there now. Get over What's there up? now. Yo, <laughs> that's going to be my. Yo, <laughs> I don't know how much time is left on this thing, but like, I want to make sure we, we don't skip over anything. So make sure, like, you know, if you got a website that you want people to follow or, like, anything you want people to kind of, like, be up on to right now, you can yeah. type it right here. We'll pin it at the combo, you know what I mean? Yeah, Another man, if, if anything, any, anything here, man, um, I know that it's lame, but anybody who ain't following me, follow, follow your boy. I'll just pin my, my, my tag and... I mean, I usually update everything there. I'm on all streaming platforms. Um, you know, just type in the name. Um, if anybody's interested in listening to the stuff, I got. I just dropped a new single, Leap, on Menace Movement, and uh, speech on my boy Daniel Still, nasty producer, man. And um, and nasty, he sang on it too. So uh, I took a break from the production on this one because uh, he's he was he, that that my boy Daniel just got it, man. He got he got the illness. So um, what? I like, yeah, I like you. Oh, I thank you, bro. Oh no, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still working on it. Yo, Chris, I was about to say, yo, Crescendo, I didn't re up on my domain, so it's still Bandcamp. So I got knowledgedays.bandcamp.com if they, if you want. But knowledgedays.com, right. yeah, 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 I don't got the domain no more. I just didn't renew it, but it's not knowledgedays.bandcamp for now. And um, are you all, you on all platforms, Spotify, everything, right? Yes, sir. Because people don't know until they know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And that's, you know, that's cool, but, you know, that like I said, like I tell people, like, we kind of have the advantage because you already have X amount of followers and X amount of fans, and now you can just send them the link. You know, personally, I used to, like, bump, you know, selling out the car, but, you know, in these I still, situations... I still do physicals, bro. I think they're necessary. I, I still prefer to do CDs if I can, man. I still got them. Yeah, yeah. I, I still sell them. You know what I'm saying? Like, people told me, yo, don't... You see, you wasted your money. I made way more money off of CDs than I exactly. ever made. Exactly, bro. I still got some in the stash, bro. I ain't playing. That's that's word up. Know, like, and you know, it, as long as you don't overpay, you right. know what I'm saying. Like, if you get a a thousand for whatever, you know what I mean. I got a, I think I got like a thousand for like four hundred dollars one time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And everything was profit after. You know, forty CDs. Hey, you real talk though, them. like I mean, and then, you can sell forty CDs in a night, and you My can bad, make yo. back way more than what you spent, man. It's like there's like twenty seconds left, so if you want to say anything, you know. Yo, shout out to my mom. 
<laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, I'm playing. <laughs> no, for real. Mom Dukes. No, I'm playing. Yo, shout out. But, yo, shout out Menace Movement, Dayton, uh, Stefanato, uh, Owlzone Effect. Thank y'all for always showing yes. love. Crescendo, my man, and my am. Um, we're going to do more. We're going to.